Alright, morning y'all, it's Krim, and I'm here with some Splatoon 3 analysis content. So with the Direct being super beefy in terms of content, it's given us a lot to break down. So instead of breaking it down all at once, which would take probably like hours, I'm going to be picking key aspects to talk about and analyze in detail. First up, I'm going to talk about the new weapon class the Direct introduced, being the Splatana. I'm really happy to see an addition to the melee family, a roller and brush, and it has some really neat characteristics too, like the charge swing and its own projectile that doesn't seem to have falloff. But before we get into how Splatana is really unique, I want to touch on what inspired it and some callbacks that it has to other things in media. So let's start with the first interesting part of Splatana being its name, which is literally kind of just simple. It's Splat plus Katana, and it's honestly just kind of funny. <laughs> like again, it fits into the like naming quirk that Splatoon usually does, and it really like fits in with the rest of the weapons. Now to actually talk about how the Inkling holds it. From what I've seen, its stance is very inspired to how Cloud Strife holds his Buster Sword in Final Fantasy and in games like Smash Ultimate, and the charge swing animation looks very similar to Hammer, the Hammer weapon type in Monster Hunter, and how it charges. It's, as someone that enjoys like a lot of video games, it's really nice to see like Splatana take those small cues from other games, like seeing the Cloud Strife stance and seeing that unique, very Monster Hunter-esque charging animation. Alright, so now that I've talked about those little small details I wanted to mention, I want to talk about the Splatana Wiper itself. So again, it's a literal windshield wiper, it's really funny, it fits into just the general tend trend of Splatoon taking household objects and making them into really cool weapons in another game, once again we love to see it. Damage numbers though, Splatana does 30 with its horizontal swings, and the vertical is extremely meaty. For, to put it into reference with numbers we know already know, Gluga does 52.5 in turret mode, Splatana uncharged does 60 damage and its fully charged swing is double that at 120 so this thing hits hard meaning that even if you take a uncharged platana swipe you're still getting chunked for half your health which is really scary and this is only further amplified by the fact that at least with platana wiper it gets torpedo and hammer now a lot of comp platoon players know that uh torpedo is a really nice sub it does some really good ship damage and rolling it does a lot of damage. Great for damage combos. Weapons like Crapid, K Jr., Kunder really benefit from torpedo and damage combos, especially Crapid. So with Splatana having damage combos, it's gonna be real torpedo is gonna be really nice to not only apply pressure, but also just to finish kills and make things easier for it. Hammer. So Hammer gets called a cosmetic special a lot, especially by Pikachu David, because it's madly inconsistent. But it does, again, feed kind of feed into the chip damage part of Splatana, with if you do chuck it, you do kind of get the hope for some chip damage, and if Hammer does have more consistent hitboxes, then you might be able to actually damage combo with it and use it to kind of finish finish off kills or apply long-range pressure with the throw, but I'm not really going to be sold on Hammer's inclusion in the kit until we see how it works in-game. I also think that the Splatana Wiper is going to be a demon at close range skirmishy maps because this thing does so much damage consistently and again has Torp and Hammer to finish off kills for it and apply more pressure and ship damage that it's going to be able to exert itself a lot on short range maps and get in pretty easily, which I think is going to be super hype. I do think though that the Splatana Wiper at least won't be able to do well on long range maps because he's kind of just going to get shot from long range by stuff like long range shooters like Jet and Pro things like even like slosher most stronger and are pretty hard and like i think of the, like blob or expo or most of the flags in the game even charger and i really don't think splatana wants to even be in their like range of influence so it's really going to depend on how many of those short range skirmishy maps we have where we see splatana wiper though there are going to be some really good weapons to pair with it though i think sloshers honestly all of them go hard because all Sloshers really appreciate having a consistent chip damage partner, and Splatana can provide that, and stuff like Blob and Explo can help deal with those long-range threats that Splatana really doesn't want to touch. I also think like shooters like Jet, for example, who Jet does no damage, is really going to like Splatana, because Jet can just clean up Splatana's kills and assist it with Mist and Vac, which is going to be really nice. And, like, again, most weapons in the game are going to probably like pairing with Splatana. Splatana. I do want to especially shout out Tent. Tent Carbon is a really strong combo. Shout out to Good Morning for pioneering that. And I think Tent Splatana can achieve similar things. Because the Tent gives Splatana a way in. And Splatana helps Tent deal with those close range fights and clean them up. Alright, now that we've talked about the Splatana Wiper, I want to touch on the actual other variant of the Splatana. Or the former Chainsaw Splatana, the Splatana Stamper. So, Nintendo of America, at least, and the Splatoon NA posts make a pretty big deal to mention that this is a heavy Splatana, which I personally think is super hype. Because, 
like we talked about in the Splatana Wiper section, Splatana can't really contend with those long-range threats, and is going to get strong-armed a lot by longer-range shooters, or just longer-range things in general. And with he what heavy Splatana means is that usually in Splatoon, heavier weapon classes have more range, more damage, but trade that out for a little bit more end lag. So the fact that Splatana Stamper exists means that this thing might be more of a threat to close, not close, to mid-range and long-range shooters, and I think that's going to be really strong. Like, I definitely see Splatana Wiper being the one that wants to play on those like short-range skirmishing maps, and I think Splatana Stamper also won't mind those, but I think it'll go hard on things like Mahi or maps with more range because it can actually sustain itself in those longer-range fights and be more assertive. Now, to keep talking about its heavy characteristic as a weapon, Splatana Stamper is probably going to have some insane damage, especially in the horizontal swings. Like, if those horizontal swings do even, like, 60 bare minimum, and especially that charge swing, Splatana Stamper is going to be really intimidating to approach, especially since this thing has Burst Bomb. I mean, if you get Burst Bombed, like, with a direct hitbox, and this thing either horizontals or decides to uncharge swing you, Splatana Stamper can just clean you up immediately which I think will make it really strong into monkey teams and teams that like to run at you because Splatana just kind of is like, oh, you're running at me? Throws a burst bomb, swings, and then you kind of just get deleted. I think what's also going to really determine how good Splatana Stamper is is the special it gets. I'm really interested to see what the devs give it. I think pretty much any special in the game would be really interesting for it, but I really want to see stuff like Crab Tank, Reef Slider, honestly even Wave Breaker. Like, I want to see this thing be able to maintain and keep space and honestly, Big Builder too. I'm going to add Big Builder to that list as well. If Splatana gets specials that can help it maintain and keep space, I think that Splatana Stamper is going to go really hard. And I'm excited to see what they show us what they show us in like the test fire, if it's there, and in like the last few ads we might get as we approach release date. But that pretty much wraps it up for my Splatana analysis. I'm really excited to see what this weapon class can do in 3, and if we see stuff like a light Splatana, and if we finally get to see Splatana Stamper's special. But next time, basically I'm gonna be talking, maybe talking about the training room. I think the Splatoon 3 training room is really hype, and I do wanna deep dive into it and touch on it and why it's good. So I'll see y'all next time. Bye bye.